Welcome to Grandma's YouTube. Grandma from Pambula. I've got a story for you today, but it's a story that's coming out of my imagination. It's a fairy story. So I might just get started straight away. I hope you're all well. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little boy called Milamu Magic. He lived with his mama and his daddy his mummy and his daddy and his beautiful puppy dog called Bodhi. And if you remember, he also had two very cheeky fairies that lived underneath the desk in the back wall of his playroom. They got up to so much mischief. Well, that's not entirely true. Not both of them, only one of them. One was called Andy and he was all dressed in blue. And he loved facts and he loved learning and he loved to know lots and lots of things that were going on in the fairy world and also in the human being world. And then there was Elvis, his twin fairy brother. Elvis was a mischief maker. He would get up to all sorts of mischief. Anyway, on this one special day, Milamu was sound asleep. And as he was starting to wake up, he felt a very gentle feeling just here on the bridge of his nose. And a very gentle tap, 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 tap. <sighs> as Miller opened his eyes, he thought to himself, that can't be Elvis, because Elvis sticks things in my ears and up my nose, right up to my boogies. So this has to be Andy sitting on my face, trying to wake me up. Miller opened his eyes and he could see Andy. He was right. The gentle wake up meant that it was Andy coming to visit <laughs> and not Elvis, who stuck his shoes in his ears and his shoes up his nose right up to the boogies. Ugh. Anyway, Miller woke up. Hi, Andy. Oh, hi, Miller, said Andy. Andy said, can we do some more dinosaur learning today? And Miller said, oh, I think I've learned so much about dinosaurs. I don't think I need to do much more learning about that. I've been playing with clay and making lizards and doing all sorts of other things. Oh, okay, said Andy. Hmm, all of a sudden, Miller got a bit suspicious. He looked around and he said, Andy, where's Elvis? Like, usually the two of you are together and if Elvis isn't with, with you, then, uh-oh, uh-oh. Will he be up to some mischief? And he said, actually, I haven't seen him this morning. He was in bed asleep and then he was just gone, so I don't know what he's got up to. Miller got up and he went out to see his mummy and his daddy. Of course, Andy had to tuck himself right under Miller's pyjamas, right under the back there, so that no grown-up could possibly see him. Miller said, hi, mummy, hi, daddy. What's happening today? As Miller looked around to see whether Elvis had got on up to any mischief. And mummy and daddy said, mm, no, not much. We're going to go out today, but you're going to stay home. Miller said, what? I'm going to stay home all by myself? I don't think so. <laughs> Mummy said, no, not all by yourself. There might be somebody here. Miller said, I heard some noises in the night time. Does that mean my grandma has come to visit? Mummy said, you'll have to have a look and see. Be quiet though. So Miller, with Andy tucked up under his shirt, his pyjama top, snuck down the hallway, quiet as mice, quietly opened the door and Miller went, <gasps> there were two things. One, so exciting, his grandma was asleep in the grandma bed. So thrilling. But the other thing, a little bit worrisome. Elvis 
was sitting on his grandma's forehead, looking down like this, with his gossamer green wings flopping just gently and his wand under his arm. Oh no, said Miller, my grandma's asleep. And if Elvis sticks his, thing, his little feet in her ears and his little wand up her nose, she's gonna know that I've got fairies and I know that no grown-ups are meant to know I've got fairies. Elvis, get down from my grandma right now. Come over here. Oh, said Elvis, and he flew his little gossamer green wings over and sat on Miller's shoulder. Who's this person? She's got funny silver hair that's all spiky. And she looks a little bit old and wrinkly. Who is this person? <laughs> Miller said, that's my grandma. She's lovely and I love her. And she loves me a lot. And Elvis said, what's a grandma? Hmm, said Miller. Well, a grandma is my daddy's mum. So she's my grandma. Ah, said Elvis and Andy. That's like the Grand Fairy. We have Grand Fairies in our fairy fancy too. Miller said, shush you two, snuggle up under there. I don't want my grandma to see you. So Miller crept over to grandma's bed, crawled up, sat there and went, grandma, grandma. Grandma opened her eyes. <gasps> She said she was so happy. Her heart was just the happiest. And she gave him a big squeezy hug. <sighs> Miller said, I don't know that I'm into hugs, Grandma. Grandma said, oh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. So she gave him an elbow bump instead. Miller said, I'm so happy you're here. Apparently, you're going to stay and play with me while my mummy and daddy go out today. Grandma said, yes, yes, that's a good idea. But Miller, can we first look at the little book that you sent me? You sent me a book about dinosaurs. Miller said, yeah, I did. That was when I was into dinosaurs. And he got very excited on Miller's shoulder because he loves dinosaurs. It's one of his favorite things. And Grandma said, these dinosaurs I've never heard before. They're so complicated. Oh, you have to tell me all about them. One is like a Fatima Mamamna, and the other one is like a Quetzalcoatlus. <laughs> Miller said, oh, Grandma, you really don't know very much about dinosaurs. And while he was saying that, Andy, of course, was laughing and laughing and jiggling inside and tickling <laughs> Miller Moo Magic because... Andy had never heard dinosaurs pronounced that way. Oh, Grandma, said Miller, one is called a Futabasaurus and the other one is called a Quetzalcoatlus. They're easy to say, really, if you practice. And Grandma said, ah, oh, a Futabababus? A Quetzalcoatlus? Grandma, 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 you really are having so much trouble with these dinosaurs. Grandma, you just don't know enough about them. Let me tell you, the Futabasaurus is a marine dinosaur and it has a long neck and its legs are flippers and it eats fish. It's so big. It's eight to ten metres long. <gasps> and it was around in the late Cretaceous period. Grandma said, Miller, how do you know all these things? I can't remember all of that. And Miller said, the Quetzalcoatlus, well, that is not a marine dinosaur. That's the biggest flying animal with a wingspan of 15.9 metres wide. It's so huge. It's bigger than our house. It's toothless. It doesn't have teeth, just like our special little toothless dinosaur. <laughs> Except our toothless little dinosaur has only got tiny, 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 wee, wee, wee little wings. Not great, great big ones, but maybe because that's a baby. It also has a long neck and was in the same late Cretaceous period. Does that all make sense, Grandma? Do you think you understand dinosaurs now? Grandma said, food to bamamas? Oh, well, 
Elvis wasn't having any of that. And all of a sudden, he snuck down, slid down Miller's back, and Miller did a bit of a squiggle, and wandered over to the edge of the bed. Miller and Andy were looking, and Andy whispered in Miller's ear, oh, oh, Elvis has got his wand out. What is gonna happen? And then before you could say, Futibosaurus, Elvis had wiggled his wand, his beautiful green wand, and lots of little sparkles of fairy magic had flown out. And what do you think had happened? Miller looked over on the bed and there was a tiny, tiny, tiny wee little Futabasaurus. Oh no, Elvis had brought a tiny, tiny baby little Futabasaurus to life in his own very house. Oh, oh. Miller thought, what's going to happen if my grandma sees that? And then Andy said, oh, oh, look, Elvis is doing it again. Elvis waved his magic wand. And what do you think happened? A tiny little Quetzalcoatlus turned up on the bed. Oh, lucky they were so small. Miller is saying to himself, oh, my goodness. I don't want my grandma to see that I've got fairy friends because... They're not meant to see grown-up human beings. And now I've got two little tiny alive dinosaurs on my bed, on my grandma's bed. He looked over at grandma and lucky she wasn't paying attention. She was busy looking around all over the table and all over the desk and all over her pillows. <sighs> Miller, she said. Miller, my darling boy, I can't find my glasses. If I can't find my glasses, I can't see things. If I can't see things, I can't read your beautiful book. Oh, Miller said. Andy whispered in Miller's ear. Oh, that's lucky. We better hide her glasses so she can't find them. Then she won't be able to see us and she won't be able to see the dinosaurs until we can get Elvis to get the dinosaurs back where they belong. So Andy while grandma couldn't see, flew over and noticed that the glasses were down the bottom end of the bed and on the ground. There was no way grandma was gonna find those glasses, not before they'd solved this big problem. As grandma was saying, well, Miller, me not having my glasses doesn't mean that we can't have it. Oh, 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 oh. There's something in my bed. Oh, is it a bug? What is in my bed? Something is touching me under my blankets. Oh no, it was the Quetzal and Coatless. It had snuggled under the bed because it was a big flying animal and it lived in the Cretaceous period and so it was it did like some warm weather and it was probably a bit cold on top of the bed. It had got under the blankets and it was moving its wings. Lucky it didn't have wings that were 15.9 metres wide and only had little tiny wings that were brushing grandma's leg like it was a spider. Grandma was not happy. She jumped out of bed. Oh my goodness. Miller said, it's all right, Grandma, it's all right. I am gonna look for that little spider and see if I can put it outside because you know we don't like to hurt animals in our house. Grandma said, oh please, Miller, could you look? So Grandma stood over by the window. Miller climbed under the blankets, had a big look around and finally found the Quetzal coatless, and picked it up and put it in his pajama pocket. Elvis, Elvis, get here right now. What are you saying, Miller? Said Grandma, what are you saying? I'm sorry, I can't hear you under the blanket. And Elvis flew quietly under the blanket with Miller. Miller said, Elvis, I've got this Quetzal coatless, and whoa, it is the cutest thing I've ever, ever seen. And I would really love to have a really live dinosaur of my very, very own. I think you're going to have to wave some magic wand and make that go back where it belongs. Oh, do I have to? Said Elvis, we haven't really even had a play with it yet. Miller said, well, we'll have to play with it on another day when there are the, the grown-up human beings are not looking. Elvis said, oh, okay. He waved his magic wand and some green fairy dust landed on the Quetzalcoatlus and the Quetzalcoatlus disappeared.
in a poof of electric sparks. That's one down, said Miller. Miller, are you all right under there? Said Grandma. Miller crawled his way out of the grandma bed and pretended he had a little spider in his hand. He said, yes, Grandma, I got the little spider. I'm just going to put it outside. He opened the door. He said to Elvis, come with me outside. And they pretended to put the spider outside. And Elvis said, now you've got to find the Foodabasaurus before my grandma sees the Foodabasaurus. Oh, my goodness, Elvis, you always make everything crazy. Miller, with Elvis, snuggled up under the back of um, Miller's pyjama top, went back inside to see Grandma. Grandma had snuggled herself back in bed. And just as she was all snuggled up, thinking to herself she might need a cup of tea, she felt a splash on her face. She looked over at her glass of water. She had a big glass of water because she'd been traveling in the nighttime with Pappy. It was a very big glass of water. And even without her glasses, she couldn't see, but she'd gotten a splash on her face and it looked like something had landed in her glass of water. Um, Miller, what is happening in this house? Since I was here last, you seem to have lots of bugs and insects. Something has landed in my glass of water. I was just gonna have a nice big sip, but I think there's something in there. Oh no, Miller had a look. It was the tiny foot of a thorus. It had landed, well, of course, because it was a marine animal. It was looking for something to eat. It had landed and gone in and was having a beautiful flipper swim around in Grandma's glass of water. Um, um, Grandma, I might just take your glass of water out. Yeah, I don't know, maybe we've had a couple of spiders in your room because you haven't been here for so long and maybe the spiders have lived here. Oh, I'll take your glass of water outside. Elvis, come with me. So Elvis and Miller again took the glass of water. Miller put his hand on the top, carried it gently outside, said to El Elvis, come on, as much as I would love to play with a Footabasaurus. We really can't do that right now when I'm visiting with my grandma. Elvis said, oh, all right. He waved his magic wand. Some green fairy sparkles flew out and the Footabasaurus, poof, disappeared in some electric sparks. <gasps> Elvis said to Miller, well, another day when we're playing quietly and all the grown-ups are busy, maybe I can make those dinosaurs come back and we can have a play. And of course, Andy will want to name all the parts and talk about what Cretaceous, Cretontious period it comes from and all of that sort of stuff. But I would just like to play with them. And Miller said, yeah, Elvis, me too. But not now when well, my grandma's here. <sighs> Elvis. Andy, you two better go back into your little house because I need to talk to my grandma. And with that, Elvis and Andy waved goodbye to Miller and flew back into the playroom, under the desk, behind all the toys and into the special little secret fairy door and back into their fairy cave. Miller went in to see grandma who was sitting up in bed, having found her glasses, popped them on and said, Miller, I can see you properly now. You look so gorgeous. I've missed you so much. Oh, you know, when I couldn't find my glasses, it looked like you were lumpy and bumpy on your pyjama top. But right now, you look just wonderful. Grandma was so excited to be spending the day with Miller. He was going to teach her about dinosaurs so that she stopped saying Futabamamus and Quetzaladatus. And he was going to teach her how to say all of the dinosaur names and he was going to show her how to use clay and make some things and they were going to read stories. They were going to make some craft. Grandma wanted to know how to make Christmas stars because it was getting close to Christmas and she wanted to make some Christmas stars to hang up in her house. And Miller, well, he's so good at craft as well as managing very, very funny fairies, was going to show her how to make all sorts of things. And so Miller and Grandma headed off, one, to make a beautiful cup of tea, and two, to do some really fun craft. <laughs> and Elvis and Andy 
were back in their fairy cave, hiding away before the grown-up human beings could find them. <laughs> and that is the end of today's story. <laughs> I hope you liked it. I wonder if by the time Grandma does see you, she can say the real names of the dinosaurs. I wonder if she practices and gets it right, because Grandma does not know very much about dinosaurs. She's got a lot to learn. <laughs> My, I love you, and I love you, and I love you. Thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> Bye, I love you lots. Bye, bye, bye.